Alma Surfside. I have a handmade jewelry shop on Etsy where I feature surf and beach inspired jewelry. And I also have an Instagram account. It's Alma Surfside 7. So I'll include links to both of those down below and uh, you can check them out. And of course I've been doing a lot of uh, bead weaving tutorials and uh, I've come up with another design that I thought I'd like to share with you guys. Um, so since it's spring, I thought it would be fun to do a flower pattern and not just a, a typical daisy chain. So this one's a little bit more elevated in that I've used um, silver as my metallic highlight. And uh, so it's an adorned flower. It has just, you know, the touches of silver going on the outside and silver on the inside of each flower. And then for the connectors, I've used black seed beads. So it kind of has a watermelon-like feel in that, you know, I've used white, pink, green, black. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a very playful, uh, very feminine pattern. And uh, so I thought it would be fun to share how I did this. And I just wanted to show you the other version that I came up with. So this is definitely a more pastel version. I've used pink, purple, white, and then gold as my highlight color. Uh, so you can see how different it looks, you know, depending on which colors you do choose. Um, but anyways, for today's tutorial, I thought I would go over this one. And it almost has like a retro feel to it. It kind of reminds me of Kate Spade style, um, just with the, the tone of green that I've chosen. So. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to do this with you guys today. And what you'll need in terms of materials are Fireline. And you guys know that I always use .006 or six pound. And of course you can use nylon thread or you can use wildfire um, or you know whatever, whatever you have on hand. But you will be working with 15 over zero seed beads. So you don't wanna go too big with your thread. Otherwise you're gonna have a, a struggle trying to get it through the smaller beads. And I've used 8 over 0 seed beads for the flowers. So these are 8 over 0 in opaque light green. And that's what you see on the left hand side of my mat. I've also used 8 over 0 in silver. Okay, so that's what they look like. These, I believe these are galvanized silver, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And the next color I have on my mat right here is 8 over 0 seed beads in white. And these are just opaque. The pink, I've used a uh, pink Ceylon AB. And these have a pearl finish. And the black are opaque black. Again, same size, 8 over 0. You'll also need 11 over 0 seed beads, and that's just simply for the outside of the flower. Okay, just to add a little decorative element. And these are silver galvanized by Toho. And finally, you'll need 15 over 0 silver galvanized, and I've used Toho. And of course, you're welcome to use Miyuki or any other brand that you have. Um, but just for this pattern, I just wanted to lay out you know, exactly what I'm using. It's also helpful to have two jump rings for the closure. I always do a loop closure, so I've done it on this on this piece just by using five 11 over zero seed beads. And I've created, you know, like a little semicircle. And then I'll be inserting one of the jump rings. And you'll also need a lobster claw, okay, for at least one of the sides of your necklace. Okay, so get your materials ready, and then uh, we'll get started, okay? Okay, so I have my beading needle attached to my far line, and I always start off with an arm's length worth of thread, and then I add on as I run out. So to start our first flower, we're gonna pick up a total of two green eight over zeros, one of the silver, and another green. Okay, so that's what you should have on your needle. Push those beads down on your thread. And I would leave yourself a good six to 10 inches towards the very end so that you can finish off your piece. 
okay and then put your needle through the first seed bead okay so there's my tail and there's my first flower shape I'm going to put it in this direction okay so that the silver is facing away from me and then I'm going to go down the green silver okay and then I'm going to pick up three of the white seed beads in 8 over 0 I'm going to go through the opposite side of the silver bead pull in my thread and then I'm going to go through all of the white seed beads okay now I'm coming out of the right side of my flower and I'm going to pick up one of the pink 8 over zeros and I'm going to go down all of the green beads pick up another pink 8 over 0 and go down all of the white beads okay now once I'm coming out of the white seed bead on the right hand side of the flower I'm going to adorn it by adding 11 over 0 seed beads in silver so I'm going to pick up one of them go through the pink seed bead and then I'm going to pick up another 11 over 0 in silver go through the green seed bead okay go through the other beads up here at the top on the side now I'm coming out of the green bead on the right hand side at the top and I'm going to pick up a silver bead 11 over 0 go through the pink pick up another 11 over 0 go through the white okay and so my first flower shape is complete and then I need to go through the bead that's sitting there in the middle okay so that's what you should have you should have your center bead which is silver and then all of the outer ring should be complete including the the silver beads on the outside of your shape okay now I'm ready to make a connector so to do that connector I'm going to pick up one of my 15 over zeros, one black 8 over 0, another 15 over 0, one of the green, silver, black, and silver. Okay, so that's what you should have on your needle. So you need to have three of the eight over zeros in that sequence and four of the 15 over zeros in silver. I'm going to go through the opposite side of the white seed bead sitting at the top of my flower and pull on my thread. Okay, so that's the connector shape. And then it's great if you can reinforce it. So that just means go through all of those beads again just to ensure that the link is stronger okay so I'm now through the uh, 8 over 0 at the top of the flower and I'm going to put my needle through the first four beads so that my needle comes out of the green bead at the top. 
Okay, so we're ready to start our second flower now that we are exiting the green bead at the top of the connector. So to start our second flower, we're going to pick up one of the greens, one of the silver, and another green. Okay, go through the opposite side of that bead. Go through the green and silver on the right hand side of your shape. Okay, pull tight on your thread and then you're going to pick up three of your white beads and go through the opposite side of the silver bead. Okay, now I want you to put your needle through all of the white beads that you just added on. And now you're ready to pick up one of the pink beads. And you're going to go through all of the green. Okay, pick up another pink once you get to this point, once you're exiting the green bead, bead on the right hand side. And then you're going to go down the white seed beads. Okay, that's what you should have. And get your needle over to the other side, exiting the last white bead. And now you're ready to adorn the outside of your flower with your 11 over 0 seed beads. Okay, so I picked up the silver. I'm going to go through the pink. Pick up another silver, and I'm going to go through the green. And I'm just working my way around the flower shape, okay? So get over to the other side, exiting the green at the top on the right. Pick up a silver. Go through the pink. Okay, I'm going to pick up another silver and go through the white. And my second flower is now complete. Okay, so the way this pattern works is that we always have the green going at the top of the flower. The pink is consistently on the side of each flower and then the bottom has white. Okay, and of course our connector has the black element which I think goes really well with it. So let's go through that one more time and then you can finish off your piece and come back to the video later and then I'll show you how to do the closure. Okay, so we're ready for the connector which means I'm gonna pick up one of the 15 over zeros in silver, the black seed bead, silver, the green, silver, black, and silver. Okay, so you should now have four of the 15 over zero seed beads in silver galvanized, and you should have three of the eight over zeros in black and green. Okay, I'm going to go through the opposite side of the seed bead that I'm coming out of. Pull tight on my thread. That's the connector. Reinforce it by going through all of the beads that you just added on. Okay, and then I'm going to step up through the silver, black, and then the silver and the green. Okay, so now I'm ready to do another flower. And for my third flower, I'm going to pick up a green, silver, green, 
go through the opposite side of that seed bead sitting at the top get my needle down to the silver bead and I'm going to pick up three of the white beads go through the opposite side of the silver bead and I'm going to go through all of the white beads that I just added pick up one of the pink beads go through all of the green beads pick up another pink and go through all of the white seed beads and now I'm going to pick up my 11 over zeros in silver okay I'm coming out of the white on the right hand side I'm going to go down the pink bead pick up another silver and go through the green bead go up through the other green pick up a silver and go through the pink bead and pick up another silver and I want you to go through the two white beads right above okay so now we've finished three of the flowers and two of the connectors and that's the sequence that you're going to do for the entire necklace so it's it's repetitive and uh, if you need a review, you can rewind, you know, the, or not rewind, but go back in the video and, uh, and see how it's done for, you, for each one, okay? So pretty straightforward. I hope that it was uh, easy enough to follow. And uh, I'll be right back and we'll finish the closure together. Okay, so I finished my necklace and you can see this is how it turned out and I'm ready to do the closure on one side of my piece. I've already done it on the other side. Um, so I'm coming out of the green seed bead at the top of my flower here and I'm going to insert my needle through the one that's sitting there in the middle. Okay, right up here, the one that has the point. And I'm simply going to pick up five of my 11 over 0 seed beads in silver. Okay, so that's what I have on my needle, a total of five. And then I'm going to go through the opposite side of the green seed bead. Okay, and then you're probably going to want to reinforce that just to make the uh, semicircle a bit stronger. And then go down the silver as well as the green. Okay, pull tight. Okay, so that's what it looks like and you can go through it again if you want to in my case I'm just going to leave it as is and then you can insert your needle through the next green bead and you can add a knot okay so I'm I've inserted a, the first knot right there after the, the second green bead. And then I'm going to go down the silver and the next pink one. And I'm going to do another knot. Right there on the outside. Pull as tight as you can, but you don't want any loose knots. And then once that's complete, 
you can cut off your excess thread. Okay, and get rid of your needle. And you're gonna get your flat nose pliers and you're gonna grab a jump ring. Insert one of those jump rings into the loop and close it up. And then for the other side, I'm gonna take the other jump ring as well as my lobster claw. I'm gonna attach those two pieces together and then insert it through the other loop on the other side of my necklace. Okay, so that's what creates the closure. And you're gonna finish it off like that, okay? So there's the final necklace uh, that we've created together. It's very simple to do. Um, it, I think I was able to do an entire necklace in one or two evenings. It really didn't take me that long. Once you get the hang of the pattern, I think you know it works up really quickly. And uh, I think it's, it's just got a very retro um, feeling to it, just the color scheme. And I love all things watermelon, so I thought this would be a really fun color scheme to work with. And uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And uh, yeah. So anyways, I hope you had a good time uh, watching this tutorial. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference with my channel and uh, it helps me create new content. Okay, so anyways, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.